Welcome to Wisconsin in Focus. I'm J.D. Davidson. The attempted recall of Wisconsin Assembly Speaker Robin Voss hit a milestone this week when organizers were required to submit valid signatures to the Election Commission. Joining us today is Ben Yao, Wisconsin contributor for the Center Square. And Ben, just handing in signatures wasn't as simple as it sounds, was it? No, it never is. That this is this is why I, I say this all the time. This is why you write down election laws. This is why we have the rules spelled out so that everybody knows what they are and 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 you know just how difficult it is for something like a recall. You you know how difficult it is for a recount after an election. You know how the rules work and and yeah, the the people who want to. Recall Robin Voss, who is the most powerful Republican in the state of Wisconsin, the the head of the assembly speaker. They, I guess, thought that a lot more people were just as angry at him as they were. And these are some folks from from Racine County who are just fit to be tied that Robin Voss didn't do more in 2020 to somehow make Donald Trump president of the United States. They're furious that he didn't fire Megan Wolf at the elections commission. They're just mad that he, he, he didn't go far enough with these election investigations. And, and he's, he's a rhino. The, uh, the, the latest was that because he's, he's a member of the, not the national conference of state legislators, but another legislative organization that somehow it has some monetary tie to the Chinese communist party. So they're now calling him Robin CCP Voss. And that's sort of the backstory as to who we're we're dealing with here. But they turned in their signatures, 10,000 signatures, a little over 10,000 to the Wisconsin Elections Commission. Now, this would be difficult in the best of circumstances because you actually have to get signatures from voters who actually live in the Robin Voss district. That would be tough enough. Just under 7,000, 6,800 and some change. So you'd have to get 7,000 valid signatures from voters in Robin Voss's district who want him to be out, unelected or just thrown to the side of the curb. Voss won in 2022 with 73% of the vote in his district. Making this more complicated is that the Wisconsin remap, you know, Governor Tony Evers, the Wisconsin Supreme Court back in December said that the maps from 2022 are unconstitutional. So the old 63rd district that Voss served in no longer exists. It's just gone. He's now in the new 66th. Well, most of the signatures that the Voss recall people got were from the 63rd, not the 66th. And then you started to get the inevitable. Well, hold on. I didn't sign that election petition. That's that's not my signature. And as more and more Wisconsin right now did a great job of of going and actually looking, posting photos of the signatures. And you can tell that one person signed a bunch of different names. You've got names from people in Janesville, which is nowhere near the Racine County District, people from Green Bay, people from other states. And it it started off as, as a joke, like, look at how poorly these signatures came in to now there's, you know, possible fraud investigation. Well, yeah, but it's not a joke. I understand the recall. That that's fine. If if you have a law that enables that to happen, that that's fine. But we're stopping everything because of this. We, we I mean, sure, the sessions pretty much shut down because of because of the you know upcoming elections and all that stuff. But we've got to stop governing because we've got a handful of people who aren't happy with something that one elected official did. It, it can't be like, oh well. You know, they didn't mean to do it or, yeah, they didn't have these or or whatever. I I mean, there has to be some consequences if there's actual fraud. Well, and and this is the interesting thing, because the story we filed here this morning, this this Thursday morning over the center square, is that the recall folks got out ahead of what looks to be a pending fraud case. The district attorney in Racine County said, sure, if your name is on this 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 list, if someone says they signed for you and you didn't sign it, document that, bring that to my office. We'll, we'll, we'll certainly take a look. There've been, you know, identity theft 
is is pro- perhaps one of the, the the charges that they could bring. So the recall Voss organizers got out ahead of it and said, you know what, we support this. We're, we're all about transparency. And and here are 400 signatures that we clearly thought were fake. So uh, we're, we're cooperating. And I guess their strategy is to throw under the bus the people who they paid to go and get these signatures. And that gets to, to the point that you were making, that there was no groundswell. This was a very small number of people who are just so angry at Robin Voss for something that happened four years ago. And, you know, Voss has been clear that there's nothing that he could have done. There's no way that you know, Joe Biden won Wisconsin by 21,000 votes. There's some election questions, absentee ballots, you know, ballot drop boxes, indefinitely confined voters. But at the end of the day, there's there's been no evidence of an overwhelming pattern of election fraud that would have changed the outcome of the election. And and, and so Voss has tried to explain this. But you know how this is. You, you, there are still people in this country, not just in Wisconsin, but across the country who really believe that voting machines in Arizona got hacked, that 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 somehow, some way they stole this election from from Donald Trump. And once once these folks in Racine County sort of went around the bend, went over the edge, there was no coming back. And and yeah, now it appears that that they were paying per signature any signature they didn't check or look or care. And you know, there there could be some real consequences for this. I mean, you know, you don't you don't just get to go around signing people's names onto official documents. You know, if, if you're walking around signing checks with my name, if you're going in and taking out loans in my name, th- those are crimes. And so the D.A., the D.A. in Racine County is going to look and see you know, just how just how much responsibility these boss recall folks have in what could be, you know, fraud or identity theft cases. Well, and, and that's good. That, I think that's important. Uh, like I said, I, I think to have the recall option is important, but the threshold has to be so strong and there has to be some safeguards put in place and there has to be some pro- prosecution if, if the lines are stepped over. Well, think about this. Re- re- remember, remember back in 2011, there was an, an effort to recall then Governor Scott Walker and there were no questions about signatures in that case. I mean, there were thousands, th- hundreds of thousands, and and there was a natural swell of Democrats, teachers unions, and people who just did not like Governor Walker. And so sort of the lesson is, if the people really want someone out, the people will take the action and the people will let you know you don't need to go and pay out of state ballot harvesters to try and figure out how to get you to 10,000 signatures by hook or by crook. It sounds sounds like a legitimate lesson. Ben, thanks for joining us today. Listeners can keep up with this story and more at thecentersquare.com. He ran for state office and was beaten. Started a business and failed. Ran for Congress and lost. But thankfully, Abraham Lincoln didn't give up. Persistence. Pass it on from the Foundation for a Better Life at values.com. 